Hi everyone, I'm back with a, another Magical Mystery bead box. This time it's for the month of November. I finally was able to get around to filming it. So of course it's December, but still it's very colorful, it's fun. I think you guys will enjoy it. As always, don't forget there's a small tutorial after I'm done unboxing. So let's get into it. You guys know how it works and let's just see what's in here. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, it is very colorful because they introduced the, the Pantone colors for fall, winter 2021 and 2022. So let's start with the first one. All right, so the first fall, winter 21, 22 Pantone color is the Fuchsia Fedora. Fuchsia Fedora has these beautiful beads here. We've got some little flowers and we've got some colorful or beautiful little beads here and then we've got these really pretty what are these oh they're little really pretty like ombre colored flowers uh we've got these fun uh drops they're pretty pretty big they'd probably be really pretty for a pair of earrings we have some of these fun look at that cat's eyes with uh catch the beautiful colors and then we've got the drops oh look the drops have like a sheen of gold on them and then we've got uh, some cubes which I always like some gold components the little balls and some little uh, these little beads that are always great for you know adding to as compliments with your larger beads so this is oh and look at that we've got some really pretty um spacers it looks like a little shell so that is a spacer so this is fuchsia fedora then we're moving on to mykonos blue i love this color blue it's just so beautiful it's like a to me it's more like a uh what is that blue not electric blue but it's not navy Royal blue. That's what I was trying to re remember. I love royal blue. All right. So these are Mik Mikonos blue. Ooh, look at this one. It's got some fun, some fun gold AB finish to it. Metallic. I love these big beads. And uh, oh, look at these. They look like little pearl pillows. <laughs> They're like little matte beads they look they totally look like little uh pillows but and then they well they're more like a instead of a square more of a diamond because it goes the hole is drilled diagonally then we've got these really pretty what is this oh yeah that's a bead too i don't know this changed the this blue is different but we'll make it work we've got some cat eyes as well okay i you know with the always a really nice compliment got some beautiful blues um, beautiful drops in metallic blue uh, got more we've got some lava beads Ooh, oh I got a bead cap the lava beads are always really nice to make uh, to add essential oils if you do like a stretchy bracelet perfect for that and then we've got some really sparkly blue spacers with little rhinestones in there and of course we've got our little these are rondelles i think they're not they're not round they're yep they're a little more on the flat side so these are our rondelles and uh, yeah that's what we have for little little beads they went with gold components here got our rhinestone spacers and these pumpkin style spacers round spacers as well so yeah this is mykonos blue next we have fire whirl and this looks like a it's almost like a coral a dark coral i think what do you what would you guys call it this is a gorgeous coral color i love this i love that uh jesse james does this because then you know what the colors are for the season and you know what to look for when you're shopping for clothes or accessories <laughs> so we're on you know on the trend look at these these are pretty little like 
They look like they're all got little ombre round trucks. These are pretty. And then we have our oval metallic, AB metallic coins. Well, they're like ovals. They're not, they're not round, but they're flat. Um, faceted, some faceted fun. Then we've got these uh, little pendants with the with a frame in gold. Again, we see this color come in with gold accents. Some fun large, oh yeah, these are large whole uh, metal beads. Little stars, we've got our rhinestones. This time we're getting little, some of these little rectangles here with it, like ceramic they look like. And then look at these pretty little copper guys. Very sparkly. They go perfect with this color. We got some fun bike cones, also with an A. They look like they have an AB finish. And these fun, like antique style little beads. It looks like they got a copper edge to them or a bronze. We've got, of course, our usual rondelles. So that's Fire World. Next one, we have um, a beautiful yellow called Illuminating. For Illuminating, like I said, we have this beautiful yellow that uh, reminds us that, you know, in the winter that we can expect spring. These beautiful rondelles, they have like a AB finish to them, faceted. Again, we've got these, we're seeing these beautiful round crystal beads with an AB finish. You know, they're faceted as well. Then, Oh, look at this one. This, oh, it's another big rondelle. Then we've got some crackle yellow beads like that. And then we've got some oval clear crystal. But the center where it's drilled is yellow. That's pretty cool. Because depending, ah, depending on where you turn it, it looks yellow or it looks crystal clear. That's cool. We have some matte frosted trucks. Some beautiful, they look like a mustard color, like a metallic finish, our little cubes. This time they went with, look at these gorgeous bead caps. Aren't they pretty? You don't even have to use them as bead caps. They can, you can hang little chains from here to make some really pretty like caps for earrings, dangly earrings or a pendant, really pretty bead caps. Uh, we've got our small little yellow, these look like they're ceramic beads or porcelain and then like uh like i said they're going with we went with they went with silver in this kit in this mini mix and here we've got our spacer rhinestones as usual so yeah this is illuminating then we have leprechaun which of course uh saint patty's is coming up in the winter saint patty's or the promise of green for you know springtime these are wooden beads aren't they these are wood beads then we've got these metal really pretty leaves we've got this cool metallic it's got like yellowish uh, faceted rondelles then we've got our lava beads that's fun and these uh, like cone beads all in green and some little crystal round trucks. Uh, I think they're, yeah, they're, they're, they have like a little crackling in the center. Little round trucks. Uh, look at this one. These are ceramic. They look like they're handmade. There's only one, so it would be good for, I guess, for a pendant. So we've got the ceramic bead and then, oh, and then we got some crystal AB faceted squares. These are fun. And then they put, I'm assuming they didn't want it to get damaged because these are in a separate little, the uh, metal components are in a separate little packet here. And let's see what they are. So got these really cool uh, bead caps and these are also spacers metallic silver metallic spacers and then some little saucers there 
What else do they have? These are cool. Look at these antique silver or patinaed silver. Little tube spacers. And I think that's it besides the light, our usual bead caps. So these are the metallic components. Oh, and I forgot to point out, we've got a flat, these uh, round, flat. They look like, to me, they look like M&M's uh, crackled uh, green beads. I missed those. Then we've got this gorgeous pale rosette. Very delicate. And it's almost like a, more of a, I want to say... Oh, what's that pink called? Mm, like a dusty pink. That's what I want to call it. Look at these little beautiful roses. Of course, to make honor of the name, Rosette. <sighs> beautiful little bead roses. And then got these gorgeous, of course, they're like beaded, pearl beaded little beads. <laughs> these are pretty. They have like little space in there. Then, of course, we have these gorgeous, round, faceted, faceted uh, beads. They're AB. So these are gorgeous. Just love the way they add some sparkle. And then we've got our, again, our oval coins. Flat on the side, faceted as well. This time we're going with an antique gold. These are pretty, these spacers. Look very, very elegant. I like these. And uh, we've got some really cool faceted, like, in a geometric shape. I'm not even know which one. Geometric shape and AB crystal beads or check beads. These are really pretty. And then um, we've got some faceted rectangle glass beads as well. And. Uh, some these cool spacers that are right here got some like smoky smoky uh, white well, on one side they're not the more beige toned uh, rondelle faceted rondelles and we have these beautiful they're between gray and pink I don't know if the camera's picking it up or you know what more like a sand color like a beige cream no no it would be like a sand beigey color so yeah that is rose palette no pale rosette i don't know what am i what am i reading <laughs> then we have this gorgeous burnt adobe it's like a, a rust color so for look at these gorgeous things that we're going with it looks like antique copper on the metal components look at these round metallic beads like they look like filigree they're really pretty the cage beads and look at the that right away called me my attention because cop anti copper I think is so pretty so um, what I want to say just I don't know elegant timeless all right so we've got these gorgeous round faceted yeah these have a facet faceted drugs I mean round uh, faceted check beads in that rusty color and these gorgeous they almost look like a peach peachy you know metallic finish beads and where are the hole on these that is so weird these are very interesting the hole is drilled in different areas so you can have like a little more dimension to your jewelry wherever you put them We've got some really large beautiful bite cones and these faceted coins as well uh, we've got some of these these like i said these look antique to me antique rectangle beads with a this one has yeah and like an antique copperish gold on the edge like a frame and then we've got these really cute coffee drop trucks they kind of remind me a little bit of coffee and Got this gorgeous little rhinestone here. Look at that rhinestone bead. And we've got these, it looks like they're little discs, little donut or discs in metallic, I mean in um, ceramic, it looks like. They're just really pretty accents. So this is Adobe. Then we have Rhodonite. 
another gorgeous blue these are really pretty i like that they put different components in all the mixes so it's you don't find all the same look at these pearl drops these are really pretty gorgeous pearl drops i like the, this color is so pretty you can make some really pretty jewelry to wear with your jeans look at these crystal uh what are these called briolettes little drop briolettes and got these really cool look at this one faceted almost looks like a pyramid <laughs> instead of a drop it is like a briolette because it's uh it's drilled through the top here but it almost looks like purple it's got copper very cool very interesting colors you can you can see in here We've got our faceted round beautiful beads glass and this time we do have some round coins faceted as well these are so pretty i really like when we get these and it looks like we went with silver components we've got little frames here which is super cool add a little accent got some really pretty it looks like some really pretty not these are not metallic these are crackled and it looks like they're ceramic got these cool you could probably make some macrame bracelets these cool large hole bracelet i mean beads i'm thinking bracelets and then we've got these adorable little suede uh, tassels and of course our bead caps and then we've got these gorgeous blue or uh, rhinestone dark blue uh, beads are really pretty as well so this is rhodonite uh, next one up is root beer are we, every time i think of root every time i see root beer i think of root beer floats <laughs> sometimes when i go to the fair i love a good root beer float it's fun <laughs> i mean it's yummy not fun look at these they look like a stone i got more of a what's it called like a concrete gray and it's a faceted um faceted rondelle mat Got our rondelle. Look at these gorgeous squares, faceted squares. And these are squares are drilled in the middle. Got these gorgeous squares. These uh, really pretty uh, as well. Little rhinestone, large hole beads. Got some more here. We have these beautiful little briolettes. Very beautiful briolettes. like those. I think I'm going to use those to do a ring tutorial that I'm overdue on. And these are our lava beads. They'll go great on elastic cord. Then um, there's these gorgeous little, we're going with silver, but they look like they have like little lines. So they're heavy too. These are really heavy. Don't put these on, on your earrings. <laughs> now we've got some um, frosted round little trucks. I like the trucks, they're really nice accent. And some faceted, faceted square, metallic squares. I like that color, so pretty. And again, we've got some uh, silver spacers, some itty bitty, looks like it's got copper, anti copper as well. Itty bitty rhinestone spacers, and that is root beer. And the last beautiful mix we have from our pantone mix 21 22 is spring lake okay i am back with my tools and supplies because some beads reminded me of this ring i think we're going to make this ring this ring was requested as a tutorial by one of my lovely subscribers michelle you know who you are <laughs> and i promised her that i would do it so when i was looking at these beads as we were bringing them out i thought oh this is the perfect time i know it's just one bead and there's like three million beads in the other one but it, i'm not always very consistent but i'll try to be better this time show more designs with the rest of the uh, Pantone colors on my Instagram. But for now, we're gonna make this beautiful ring right here. It's, if you like wire wrapping, then this is a, for me, it's a cool, you know, like a soothing activity because you just wrap the wire 
and then you make your little curls here but I'll show you uh, the style of the wrapping and how to curl this and just kind of put this ring together to get started you can use any stone but it you know you want it to have like this it'd be kind of on the flat side like a coin for this ring that I created it was a real bead so if you order any of the pantone colors you could definitely grab one of the flat stones from them it could be from the package it could be like this round one it could be this shaped one so what you're going to need is 18 gauge wire i recommend artistic wire because it is a softer wire perfect for wire wrapping for doing wire designs and then i have this i think it's like a generic this is 28 gauge wire then you're going to need your ruler a ruler i have this tape measure these little mini tape measures are perfect for these kind of projects and i have one of my mandrels from my kit from the beadsmith they come in like a they have it's like a folding case and they have different sizes so i'm just gonna need this to shape really quick part of the ring let's get started oh and then you're gonna need some small flat nose pliers and definitely something to straighten your wire out with because it can get sometimes a little curly or you have to unwind and you want to flatten it out again so you definitely need your nylon jaw pliers it also helps you kind of squish things without marring the wire so you're going to definitely need that if you have regular wire uh, if you have regular pliers like these and you can uh, go to like i think they have it at michael's or uh, maybe probably your local bead store it's called tool magic and you can add it you know you just dip your the tips of your pliers into it and it prevents you know it provides a coating that dries pretty quickly and then you can you know manipulate your wire without stripping it of the uh, the special polymer coating that's on here so only I did I haven't dipped these I gotta dip these in that and then of course you're gonna need a nice pair of wire cutters and I have the Zeron pair I really like their their pliers so you've got that it's a you know a nice side cutter so speaking of wires you can do this ring in different colors it doesn't have to be in you know gold only gold or only silver there's rose gold there's hot pink i mean if you go to the beetle on website you'll see how many colors there's out there if you want to make a special one for the holidays you there's green wire you know 28 gauge wire there's just so many colors you can mix and match to coordinate to whatever you want, whatever you like to make your ring. So I just wanna let you know that you're not stuck with silver or gold. What, like for this one, what I did was I did a base of silver wire and mixed it up with rose gold. So, and then I, I wanted to, or I might end up doing that one, this one in a bronze color but I didn't want to do this tutorial with this color bead because I want a lighter color, which is the gold. I want a lighter color to, so you guys can see what I'm doing. So just want to let you know that there's so many ideas, so many different things. You can also use natural stones. You can use a round stone instead of, as long as it's, you know, it's flat so that you don't have too much of a, a raise right here. Let me take this off so you guys can see. You don't have too much of a lift right here. You want it definitely to be more of a flat stone, but you can use natural stones. You're not, you're, you don't have to have a um, stone, like, the exact stone like this. And you'll see because we're going to shape it in a while. Okay, I'll quit blabbing. Let's get into it. So we're going to need 15 inches of your 18 gauge wire. So let's measure out our 18 inches. I mean, 15, sorry. <laughs> with all the numbers I get mixed up so let's measure out 15 inches so I'm going to start right oops we don't want centimeters 15 inches so right about there if you do work in centimeters it's uh 37 approximately 37 centimeters and let's go all the way to our 15 inches and right about there so I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to do the flat side so that we have a nice sharp edge 
flat edge like that. So now see how we have a nice flat side and then make sure that this side is flat as well. Start moving my little mat all over the place. <laughs> we're gonna take our stone. First of all, we're gonna find our middle point. Sorry. We're gonna find our middle point. So that would be like right there. And kind of gently, you don't wanna, you don't want to completely flatten it, but you want to gently, see this is where you grab your, uh, this is where you would grab your mandrel and and pull, kind of hold it right there. That way it shows you that that is your center point. And now you can kind of tighten it up right here like that. Even if it crosses over here, that's fine. We'll straighten it out in a minute. But now, see now I've got that center set for me. Now I can put my little stone in here and it's going to take a little bit of maneuvering as always. <laughs> and then you kind of shrink it to the size of your stone. And there we go. See how it's the size of the stone. Now you want to bring it and that's why it's nice to have that side because otherwise this stone would be flipping and flopping all over the place and you'd abandon the project. <laughs> so right where that little hole is, you know, the other side, the exact center, you're going to take your little pliers. And I just want to make sure I'm going just right there. And you bend this straight, just like that. And then you call, take the other one and make sure that it's on the wire completely. So now I will, you gotta make sure that when you bend it, it goes flush up against this one, just slightly. So like so. See, make sure that you're having just a little bit of space between here because you're gonna be putting wires through these two strands or two pieces of wire right here. So you want to have plenty of room to work with. You've got a little bit, just a few millimeters. I could probably bring it closer if I wanted to. So now that you've reached that, then take it off, take your stone off and you know, kind of straighten up your wire. See how we have that little drop shape. Okay, once we have our wire shaped like this, then you want to cut a piece of 28 gauge because here's where we're going to anchor our stone. I'm getting my pliers out of the way. Here's where we're going to anchor our stone into this part here. So we're going to start out with a simple wrap. So you're just going to, to anchor it, you're going to need to go twice, but we're going in this direction. So right now I can do it this way, but then it's going to be a little bit of just hanging on. So we're just going to do two and we're going to go really close here. It's just basically, like I said, to anchor your, your um, wire to this frame. I'm just going to call it the frame. And once you have that, you kind of want to go about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch up, just right at the neck, right there. So once you have your two anchors, let me tighten this one. I see it looks a little loose on the back. I just don't want to move my hands. All right, so now we're going to go up. Once you have these two, and you can rewind it as many times as you need to until you get it. You go over the top like this and then you go through the loop and I cut about well I cut more than it should but you could you should be able to have enough with 20 inches then you go around and you go through the back go into the loop like the so and then go around 
So we're just going to do like a, it's like a figure eight if you were lo to look at it this way. So go around the top and then you go through the loop and this is going to bring you, you go around to the back and then all you have to do is just kind of push this together and you're going to go around the back through the little loop here like that and then oh you're gonna go all the way around to the top like that and bring it again through the loop so it really depends on where you end up but making sure that you're covering front and back so again you're gonna go through the back you're gonna go around to the top and you're going to put it right there so now what you're going to start to do you're going to read you reach we reach the little like i don't know little and corners here the bottleneck so now we're going to start go, continue to go up in here so you go around again the top bring it through and then go again and then bring it to the through the back bring it up to the bottom one and then go through it again and then now you got that you go up again and okay so i've gone a little bit up you see how i don't know if you could hopefully you can see it on camera let me put it down lower it looks like it's getting fuzzy so right let me zoom in a little bit and you can see i went I wired, wired all the higher here. So I started on this bend or on the loop where the loop starts. And if you look here, you can see that there's a little pocket right there. And that's where we're going to insert our stone. And that's why I said you want to leave a little bit of space. All right. So I have my stone in here. Like that so now what we're going to do let me get this piece out of the way and cut this off so it's not in my way so now you're going to continue and this is why you need to leave a little bit of space here I'm actually going to lift this a little bit you know what I'm, let me take this out again because where I need the space is right here now I'm going to use my nylon drop pliers there so i open this the bottom up a little bit more instead of the top just make sure that it's on there properly so now what you're going to start doing is while you're holding this stone in here make sure it's not going to come out that's that's why we're doing this wire wrapping you're going to go through the top right there where you where we have that little space thread it through like that see we gotta go through there bring it down all the way down here and then go around and this is going to take a little bit of patience on your part but all wire wrapping really needs is is all about a beautiful you know all wire wrapping is all about patience so so I said just sit down when you have you know do it when you have a quiet moment and you can watch a show or something your favorite show listen to a book that's at least that's what I do and it's for me it's very soothing okay now then I'm, now I'm going through the bottom and I'm gonna wrap to the top we're gonna wrap here so you're basically doing the same movement only now you have your stone in the way pretty much see how I have 
just enough room beside the stone to get in there and make sure your wire is not bent otherwise you can break it by accident so now kind of start to and bring it over again like that so just continue to do that until you have wrapped just the bottom half where you feel that your stone is secure so I'm gonna go and do that and I'll be right back okay so once we have reached I did about two well no one third is what I want what I mean I did about one third of the stone the hole we have the hole right here Usually if you have the hole sideways, you would do this pattern all the way till you reach that side hole just to, what we want to do is anchor it to the form. But in this case, I'm just going to go through the back and this won't be showing because it's going to be facing down. You won't see it. I don't know if you can see it on my ring right here. But other than that, nobody will notice. So all you have to do is Put it through the back and then it'll come out down here in the middle uh, come on i didn't put it in straight i want this to be nice and straight just kind of put it through there see how it comes out down here there we go right there and down there make sure that you're not pulling on the wire especially if you're using color wire with a, a color on it that you're not scraping too much because otherwise you'll start to peel the color and that's we don't want that so now that see how it bare you're barely gonna see it right there so now we have it down here and what we're going to do is just bring it all the way to the other side and see if we can dig it in there just to anchor it here see we're going to bring it to the back right there Oop, got caught and again make sure that you're straightening it out here otherwise the wire will kink and if your wire kinks then it will uh you'll damage it and it'll break okay so now that we have it coming out here we will cut the end right there like i said this is what's going to go inside on the inside make sure you use that you're careful when you're so the ring is going this is going to be the top the part that's showing of your ring and make sure that you tuck in all your little your little uh you know wires hanging out there so now we have these two strands here and what we need is four strands so let me straighten these out so that they're side by side so we're gonna need four strands so we're gonna need to cut obviously two more and because if you see here on my ring we have four strands so now we're going to cut some more 18 gauge wire and we're going to cut eight inches so i'm going to take here and measure eight inches Is right there and grab our cutter okay so once we've cut our four pieces of wire and sorry it looks blurry right now but I need it to be zoomed in for you guys so now what we're going to do is we've got to make sure first of all that we're looking at the right side up this is where we had where we anchored our stone on this side so it's going to be facing up 
and then we started with two down here two wraps so now what we want to do is anchor this right here and do two wraps at the top to even it out and I'm working off the roll I don't like cutting pieces because then you have to match it to what to the but if you if you want to cut pieces if you don't like working off the roll that's fine um, you just will have to make sure that you're matching the wire wrapping to where you are where you ran out you know uh, matching the pattern all right so now I have two so now I'm gonna bring in my next and remember it's about two inches that we're leaving up here I'm gonna bring in my next wire and it's gonna slide down a little bit but we'll fix it in a minute so now what we're now that we've brought these two in this is at the back so now we're gonna bring it in between this is gonna be one two three so we're gonna bring it in two and three in the middle and then we're gonna grab on to one and two only make sure that you were holding it <laughs> that's why I left a piece of lip over here or a piece of wire there we go and I don't know why I wrapped that the wrong way so now that we have one and two now we're gonna go around three and four and again through the middle I mean I'm gonna go around one and two two times again it's gonna look a little funky here right now but just hold your wires firm one, we're wrapping around one and two twice and this is going to be kind of like a stepping pattern one and two twice so now that we have the top one we went around once and now we're going to go in through the through one and through two and three again to wrap it around twice and again, this will, I promise you, get easier. So now we're gonna grab these two center ones, the original ones, and we're gonna wrap around uh, two times as well because we're going like in a step ladder. We're making little steps of the wire, step pattern. Let me just move this to the side there, kinda. <laughs> Come on, there. So now we're going to go through two and three twice like that and now we're going to grab our next wire and put it over here like I said don't worry about how much we have to leave over on this side because we'll, we're going to fix that. So we're going to go through the back like so. See now we're down here, now we're going to do three, I mean one, yeah, three and four. I'm going to go around that twice, one and two. So see how we have like little stairs? I don't know if it's, hopefully it's visible without the light. There we go. And now we're gonna go back up. So now we're gonna go through three and four. And we're going to wrap, we're gonna wrap here, uh, we're gonna wrap two and three twice. The whole issue is between is grabbing those wires. See how we start to have this little pattern here? Let's see if I can hide it from the from the light a little bit. It looks like that. And then we're gonna go through the middle of 
two and three. And they start, I swear, they start to spread out once you, you can even bend them a little if you want. And then they'll, there, just like that. And then you'll straighten them out as you go along. And then we're gonna grab one and two. Go through the center twice. See, now we have that pattern started where we're going up and down. You see that B? So I'm going to do it a, one more time and then you can rewind if you want to see it again. And, other, and then we'll come back and then I'll finish it and come back. Finish the pattern. Now we're going to go through three and four to wrap two and three twice and end up in the back see how we end up in that back in the back part and then we're going to wrap three and four twice so one and two and now we're going to go back up we're going to go up the ladder again so we're going between three and four to wrap two and three like that there we go and then we're going to go through two and three to wrap one and two twice and end up in the back okay and then what you want to do is gently use your nylon jaw pliers and now you can bring this up here let me just get this straightened out there we go now and pull these up i need about two inches so here's where you can kind of adjust these in there. And then now you can just separate these so that you have room to work like so. And there we go. So I'm gonna go and continue this. And again, you wanna do about, oh, I wanna say, let me do it in centimeters because I think it's easier. I learned in, in centimeters so for where we start we're going to do six centimeters so a little over two and a quarter inches so six centimeters right there okay and we're going to get up to there and then I'll be back when I'm there and we'll I'll show you what's next so I am done with the pattern. Look at how pretty that looks. And I did, as we, as I said, I did six centimeters. So let's go right here to measure just to make sure. Yep, you can see that there's six, six centimeters right there where I finished this and then we have here on our little arms here they look like the arms right now i have five centimeters right there and then on this side we have six centimeters so on the little long arm so what we're going to do is take well you could either cut this roll of 28 gauge or use another one if you have one if not that's fine just cut the other one but I have another roll here. I want to leave that one on there for the next process. So I'm just going to take more 28 gauge wire. And what I'm going to start to do is roll about a little bit, about an inch and a half of wire around here. So all you have to do is just go round, 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 and then squeeze round until you cover about an inch and a half and squeeze and one two just keep going till you know just just like this 
and push it down. And this, I love the coil. When you do a coil on the, it has a really nice finishing touch. Just go right down there. And just, like I said, it's about, let's see. About an inch and a half so we still have yet to go all the way up here and just keep wiring this oops make sure you're not going over your wire wraps just squish it down you can either use your nail or your nylon job pliers okay so we are going to first of all use our cutters for there there we go and then we're going to leave a piece right there so we can hold on to it and then now we're going to roll we're going to do our twist towards the bottom so just grab the tip And then start our little twirl. See, and then it's kind of squish it in there. Now we have a really nice, and then. If you, I, this is where I like to come in with my nylon, I mean with my um, bent nose pliers that are covered in Tool Magic because they will grip and you don't have to squeeze too tight to ruin your, your coil. So now we're going to go down like this. See how pretty that looks. And now we have it nice and tucked in there. So now I'm gonna do the same with this one. I'm gonna wrap this side like this and do just basically the same thing as the other side. I'll be right back. So now I have finished my perns on here. And this is about an, an inch, I wanna say almost, about an inch and three quarters. So almost to the next line in the inch and three quarters. And now we're going to cut this off here. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're going to, of course, leave our little, little bit of area that we can use to hold on with our pliers to not damage our, our coil. So now that we have that, now we're going to go and twist in that direction. Now we're going to go up basically towards the stone so or towards the bead so it's gonna go we're gonna go all the way around here like that because this is gonna go over see how we have a nice beautiful little tight coil okay so now that we kind of bring it over here just kind of really get it close on top of your on top of your other coil you can even kind of bring it down like that just so that uh, there we go so just like this and now Just, you can like I said you can make final adjustments with your fingers because so that is nice you can kind of arrange it to where they're there we go just want to make sure that they're nice and uniform and now we're gonna 
start working on the other side and this this amount is to make a ring of a six or a seven size it, it'll be adjustable so if you need a larger ring than six or seven you definitely want to do more of the pattern probably about a centimeter centimeter and a half more or or a uh, half an inch more I guess so now to work on our bottom once you you've added as much as you you know if you want need to add some more otherwise once we have the six centimeters then now we're going to do a different type of pattern on this bottom so we ended up here with these with these two I ended up switching it around because I realized that I was on the wrong side I was on the side with this with this wire here so I needed to flip these little guys around so this is the right side and now I'm just gonna go and this is the larger swirl just so you have an uh, idea of the orientation and I'm gonna use the bottom these bottom two so what we're gonna do is first go one two we're just gonna keep with this gold you can add a different color if you want but then you have to cut this and then start with a different color you can definitely use as many colors as you want make it um, you know if you're making it for somebody for a gift you can choose their favorite color like I said there's wires and all sorts of colors so we said we had how many okay so I had three turns and then four and then I'm gonna wrap one time around both of them around both these wires and again one two three four and again I'm going to wrap around all the top wires and we're just going to be pushing this down and we're going to be pushing this down the reason we're doing these like this is because this is that we're doing the little the top this middle wire is getting the, the one wrap is because we're going to be twisting it this way and if we if we did a different pattern where there was more on the top it'd be hard to twist you know they just get stuck I don't know if that makes sense the open part makes it easier for us to make a swirl and I'm gonna do of these little lines we're gonna do we're gonna count 23 so once you reach 23 of these little lines then and you, you then wait for me no I'm just kidding once I reach the 23 I'll come back and show you guys what's next okay so now I'm done I have 23 of these little lines here so all I'm gonna do is just do about half an inch a little more maybe a little more than half an inch right here of just pure coils of coiling so we're just going to coil 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 here so now we're going to cut a little bit right about just to leave that little lip to hold on to oh. and then we're going to let me straighten this out because it got a little wonky make sure that it's nice and straight wire there so now what we're going to do is take and we're going to we're going to swirl uh, towards the uh, opposite of the lines so now this one up here we're going to leave bare this one because what we're going to do is bring it around and give it some shine just a little bit texture and shine to both so now we're just going to wrap around here to get it started and bring it all the way what we want to do is make sure that it's tucked into here so because then we're going to go and twirl everything else all together so let's make sure that we've got a nice tight swirl see so right about there we're going to cut make sure you're not cutting anything else there we go and kind of 
squish this together and now keep going with your swirl like this or you can use like I said your nylon drop pliers if you have if you don't have see how it ends up covering it up some more makes it look really pretty but I like these have more they're I don't know I feel like they're stronger they have more strength to them now now that we have this part done now we're going to shape our ring to close it because these two have to be worked once the ring is shaped so let me grab so here you want to grab your ring mandrel and I'm going to do a size seven this ring is not going to be for me so I'm I, my fingers are really small <laughs> I think I'm like a five, five and a half. So what I'm gonna do is go to the size seven here. And you're gonna take your ring, hold it right there, and go around to make sure you're doing the right side. So shape like so. Uh, where's the seven? Now I lost the number. There we go. <laughs> So let's see. Now you want to swirl it around. I mean, you could always use like a pen or a mandrel if you don't have a ring mandrel, but then you won't know unless you measure it, I guess, on your finger. You wouldn't know the size. I want this. I want this part to be on top. So I'm gonna lift this up a little bit and first squish this one in there the nice thing is that it's not completely closed so it definitely is adjustable and we'll make the final adjustments once we're done working with these two these two uh, these two wires up here that are left okay so now we have our ring nice and adjusted this the stone goes basically facing see how it's it's not completely straight across it curves so like if you want to either wear it like this with the stone the stone like that or if you want it to face the other side which I think might look I don't know might look prettier so now what we're gonna do is just take our our 28 gauge wire on here and we're just going to wrap this all the way up till we have uh, how much should we do if I remember correctly when I made it so until we have about three inches yeah I think three inches is good so once we have th uh, three inches then um, I'll come back and show you basically all you're going to do is coil it just like we've done all these other ones then I'll come back and show you what's next. Okay, so now I have, I went a little crazy, but I did our three centimeters. So as of here to here, we have our three centimeters. So we're just going to go around here. There we go. So I'm going to do, see how we made that little swirl here? Try to stay in focus. We're going to go in the opposite direction of this swirl right here. So now we're gonna go this way. Now we have that beautiful swirl right here. And now with this wire, little lip here, and we're just gonna start doing our, our cover. I mean our coil all right so I covered up most of it again I'm leaving the wire on here until I see if I like what I you know if I see the if I like the length so this one this we went this for this swirl we went this way now we're gonna go in the opposite direction with this one so this one we're gonna go this way just going to make a nice like a little tornado <laughs> gonna go in the opposite direction 
like that and I'm just gonna come back around this time we're gonna make an, the swirl a little bit tighter like this and we're going to bring see. now we have this here and squish this swirl a little bit more there this way this is where you make your final adjustments and just so that it fits so that your swirls fit the way you want them to so there we go that's kind of better if we give it some more room now let's see This one goes out here, so I think I'm going to wrap it a little bit more. I'm going to add a little more. This one I, I'm not measuring, I'm kind of playing it by, I'm eyeballing it, so to speak. But I think that should be enough, yeah. So, now, let's see. I got my getting stuck in my wires here. All right, so now we're going to cut this off and take our little pliers here to close the, the wire there. And now we're going to leave our quarter inch like that. I always try not to get and now as always we're going this direction we're gonna go in the opposite direction this one is gonna go over here so it ends up kind of it kind of oh, I bent it more than I should okay don't bend it like that <laughs> kind of gonna look like a little butterfly by the time it's set Just kind of the small little turns is what I find works the best for me when making these swirls. All right, so let me make this one over here. There we go. And this one comes out over here a little more. It's okay if they stick out because it's kind of when it's going to go on your finger like that. I think it looks like uh, a little, what do you call it? Like a little butterfly, see? Once you have it set. Now we're going to go put it back on our mandrel. Make sure that it's nice and curved still. So we've got our seven and kind of press on here. Like I said, you can kind of move around the stone. You can, what I notice is that if I push the stone up this way or the, the bead this way, it just looks funky. Whereas I kind of like it over here. That's why I don't know. I might, I don't know if I like this bead. What do you guys think? So then now that you have it, Okay, I need to bring these swirls down too. Where are they? Where's my seven? There we go. So what I want to do is kind of press these down so that they curve around your finger. And I think the, the beauty of this is all the wire work that goes involved in, in this project. So there we go. It's just a beautiful 
more of a work of art. I think. <laughs> Let me just kind of bent this out of shape a little bit. There we go. You know, just like I said, then you can just manipulate it to look to fit where you want your swirls, where you want your stone. So, and it is going to go in a diagonal like that. That's just the way it's, so you can wear it like this. The swirls can come up your finger. And then you've got the stone here, or if you want the other way around, if you want the stone to stick out this way, then you've got all your little swirls going down your finger. It really depends on how you want to wear it. I know at the beginning I was saying braille. I don't know what I was talking about, but <laughs> there you go, just like that. Once I do my nails, it'll look even prettier. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Do you like it? Do you not? Um, because I tried doing the stone this way. I guess you can. We can bring it up. But see how it looks kind of, I don't know. What do you guys think? The stone up or the stone down? So here's the finished ring. What do you guys think? Do you like it? Uh, I kind of adjusted the stone or the bead to go up towards my finger, kind of like a snake. But you can always uh, make, make it with it coming down. So it really just depends. You can make it with less swirls. It really depends on your imagination, your creativity, what you guys want to do. If you want to use a different, smaller stone, maybe a smaller stone would be a lot better because you could hide it a little more amongst the swirls. It all, like I said, it really depends on you guys. You can use different color wire, totally, totally, um, you know, adjustable or how can I say it? Totally, um, it can totally be changed to whatever you guys want to do with it. How would you guys wear the stone? Sticking up like this or or down like I had it previously? Just, uh, I think it just really depends on how you wear it. But let me know in the comments down below, what do you guys think? And if you like these types of tutorials, please give this video a big thumbs up as that tells me that you want to see more like this. And if you're new here on my channel, welcome. And I hope you decide to stay and subscribe and ring that notification bell that's right beside it. So you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much. We've reached 400. And as a 400, if you send me via Instagram, my Instagram um, address is down in the comments. I mean, down in the description box. If you send me an Instagram DM, that you want this ring, whoever I get it first from, send me a DM and I will mail this ring out to you as a thank you because we have reached 400 subscribers and I am so, so grateful. So I would love to give this to somebody that will enjoy it, that likes it, will enjoy it and yeah, and show it off. <laughs> so let me know, like I said, send me a DM, whoever I get the DM from first, then I will mail them. You know, send me a DM with your name and address and let me know that you're subscribed here on my channel and whoever I get it first from, I will send this ring to. So thank you so much again for watching and take care, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.